Hey everyone, in this really quick sponsored video, it's the first video I've ever done that's been sponsored, but I don't think you'll notice anything different at all. I want to talk about creating a virtual network. Now, the key thing to understand about a virtual network is it's going to live in a specific subscription. And then within there, it lives within a specific region. So it cannot span subscriptions, it cannot span regions. And so now I would have the virtual network object that I'm going to create. And we see this if we actually jump over and take a look at this. So here I'm gonna create a virtual network. As usual, we have a subscription, a resource group. We can just give it a virtual network name. I know something random like Hudson's Hamburgers. Obviously normally I would put delicious in there. And you can see it's tied within a particular region and my particular subscription. So that is the boundary of my virtual network. And then we could also have some security options. I'm gonna skip that for now. And then we have this concept of IP addresses. Now our virtual network is defined by one or more IP ranges. Typically, this is going to be from the RFC 1918, those reserved IP addresses we use for internal networks, but it could be anything you wanted. But if you did bring an internet routable, it would not actually be internet routable. It would still be part of that private internal network. Ah, delicious. So we're going to want to give our virtual network one or more IP ranges. So at minimum, it's gonna have an IPv4 IP range, but then we can add additional IP ranges. You wanna make sure this is not overlapping with any other virtual network, any on-premises network, anything you might wanna think about connecting because it wouldn't be able to route. So we can jump over to this. Once again, if we go and look at our environment, it's picking an IP range for our virtual network. So what we see here is it has picked 10.0.0.0, which is from that RFC 1918, and it's making it very large, a slash 16 network. But I could change this. I could absolutely say, well, no, maybe there's a network I know I'm gonna connect to, I'm gonna use 10.8. And notice when I make this change, it's also changing a default subnet that it's creating that is a subset of that IP space. So any subnets always have to be within the range of the address. But I can have more than one address space. Notice I have this option here. I can add additional IPv4 or IPv6. So I can have combinations of IPv4 and IPv6 address ranges in my virtual network. If I had IPv4 and IPv6, that would enable me to dual stack the various resources I may want. So I could absolutely go and say, hey, I wanna add an IPv6 space, and or maybe I wanna go and add another IPv4, and I can go and select those and add those to my environment. Now we mentioned subnets before, so when I think about, okay, that virtual network, realize it's adding a default subnet for me, which is a portion of the IP range of the virtual network, but I can change this. I could delete this. I could change the name of it. I can add additional subnets as well as part of the creation experience, but I could also add them post-creation. I can go and add subnets as I need to. And an important point is when we think about a region, remember many regions support availability zones. So AZ1, 2, and 3, both the virtual network and your subnets span all of those different availability zones you have in that particular region. So let's go and take a look at that as well. If we jump back over, so we can see we have this default subnet right here, but I could change the name of that subnet if I wanted to. Maybe I could change it to delicious 
for how delicious Hudson hamburgers are. I could change the particular IP range of the particular subnet we're dealing with here. And absolutely, I could go ahead and just delete it. Or I could add additional subnets that I want to have as part of this virtual network. But again, I could go and also add these post creation time. So I really have full control over all of these various capabilities. And once we've entered all this information, we could just complete and go ahead and create our virtual network. And now once we have this virtual network, well, now we have these various subnets, I can very easily go ahead and create various resources, connect them into that virtual network. They could then potentially take advantage of connectivity. Maybe I peer this to other virtual networks. Maybe I have it connectivity to on-premises. Whatever that might be, I'm now ready to leverage this for part of my resources. I really hope this helps. And until next video, take care.